It's so amazing to be here on the historic campus of Shaw University. Tell us your name and your role here at this historic institution. I am Paulette Dillard. I am excitedly and honored to be the 18th president of the Shaw University. Excellent. And how long have you been the president of Shaw University? I have been the president of Shaw University a little over five years. I have been at the university for 10 years. Uh, I arrived in August of 2012 um, as a professor and absolutely excited to be back in the classroom um, with no idea that I would be uh, president 10 years later. Wow. And you know, when you look at that 10 year period, we've seen a lot of changes with Shaw University. Um, our partnership with UNCF Institute for Capacity Building is to support the transformation work. Um, when you hear transformation, what does transformation mean to you? Transformation means change, evolving, and being a scientist by training. Um, transformation is energy, um, uh, uh, things moving, advancing, and that always generates excitement for me when I hear the word transformation. But let's talk specifically about the transformation work here at Shaw University. What have been some of those projects and experiences, but more importantly, what has been the benefit of that? Wow, now that, that I have to unpack a lot there. Um, first of all, uh, Shaw, Shaw University's history and legacy is so important and so, um, so rich, um, but in that, the progression and the future of Shaw has not been as clear as that amazing past. So much of the focus and the transformation uh, for Shaw has been, how do we build on that legacy for the future? How do we address today's issues from the context of all the first that have been Shaw University. And so we began to look at the, the challenges. And one of the first things that we had undertaken was the leveraging of assets to the long-term sustainability of the institution. And one of the richest assets that Shaw has is its location. It is located in, as you can see, uh, downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, one of the fastest growing, most economically viable cities in these United States. And Shaw sits right in that downtown. So we looked around and came up with the, the hashtag, surrounded by opportunity. And so with that, how does Shaw use this location to leverage a future for the institution? And so one of the projects that we've been most excited about has been the, what we call the campus redevelopment plan. How do we upgrade infrastructure on HBCU campuses is a major challenge. And our infrastructure is especially a challenge. We've been here since 1865. The building that we're sitting in right now for this interview was built in 1873. And so when you think about what that means historically, it also has implications for what it means right now, trying to keep these buildings and the entire campus able to keep up with the needs of the 21st century student. So we undertook this Urban Land Institute study, which to my knowledge, no other HBCU campus had ever done that kind of study. And it was a land use study. And if you're not familiar with the Urban Land Institute, it is a professional organization that brings together architects, um, landscapers, um, everyone in that field of land use and real estate, and they volunteer their time on a panel to travel to a city um, or to a campus and do a study. And we engaged with them 
uh, and they came and spent time here at Shaw. They do this work in a week. So they bring a panel of experts, they spend a week in the city, they meet with the stakeholders on the campus, they meet with uh, city planners, they meet with neighbors, business people, and they understand what's the landscape um, of the, the place that you are studying. And we gave them a series of questions we wanted answered. You know, what was the long-term outlook? What were the jobs? What were the things that Shaw could provide uh, to be an asset to the community in which we live? So we undertook that study, got excited about what Shaw could be and do. Uh, just leveraging its real estate assets. And I am excited to say that it is coming to life. We are in the process of rezoning uh, the campus. Therefore, that creates the potential to redevelop the campus into what we've uh, decided to call the Shaw U District. So when you drive into downtown Raleigh, that when you get to this part of town, you know that you're in the Shaw U district. And for me, that's a perfect example of what transformation looks like. This episode of HBCU Voices is brought to you by UNCF's annual Unite Conference. Join hundreds of HBCU leaders, supporters, and Black college representatives for the most influential gathering on black higher education. Panel discussions, workshops, and tons of networking opportunities will be available for attendees, including a commencement address from Spelman College and Bennett College President Emerita, Dr. Janetta Besh Cole. Unite takes place in Atlanta from July 17th through the 20th. Follow at UNCF ICB on social media to see live updates from Unite 2023. My name is Zaid Still. I am a junior here at Shaw University. In 2019, I moved here with my mother, and so I was still freshly new to the area. And we actually lived about 12 minutes from here, and since the institution was smaller and perfect for me in the size, I chose Shaw University as my first golden school to go to undergrad. Our HBCUs have such proud traditions, but more importantly, promising bright futures. And so, we hear a lot about UNITE. Uh, we talk about black higher education. Talk to me or react to when you hear UNITE and black higher education. The people who are, who are here now at Shaw University, we chose it for one reason, and that is to get an education. We chose it for also family. Shaw University has been a family since day one. I came here during COVID-19, and Shaw has been supportive since then. Um, they've never let me down as far as research, resources, um, helping me with my career and what I want to do, helping me with my majors. I am a photographer, I'm mass communications, that's what I love. I'm also in political science, so my goal with political science is to help educate my youth and my generation about how to unite. I wouldn't look at it as color. I, I see myself as a leader. I see all of my friends as leaders and they're all different shades. So if we all come together and unite, we will stop the world and we will show them something different than what they've seen in previous generations or the life before us. It's about building a foundation that can help future generations, help the youth to understand that you have someone here that is able to help you, to that cares for you, who wants to give you the resources that unfortunately you may have lacked in your community. But now here you have someone like me, you have someone like our president of Shaw University who are standing in the cameras, who are talking to people to help us and to give us the resources we need to prosper. College is a step towards a future. Yes. Talk to us about how Shaw University has prepared you for your next journey. You have over a thousand students here that come from different backgrounds, different stories, different traumas. And me being who I am and taking an extra foot forward and making sure that I understand what I need, Shaw has helped me with that and telling my story um, has helped them also navigate where I need to be. I feel like Shaw has always been there for me. I mean, I can't stress that enough from my um, professors, from my colleagues as well. You know, they've always been there to support me. And my professors are now helping me 
get ready and prepare for grad school. You know, I want to be a criminal justice defense det attorney. So right now is the time for me to prepare and to use those resources that I was granted when I walked into the Shaw Bear doors. So I'm very fortunate and blessed to be where I am today because without Shaw and without my determination, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in this seat. I wouldn't be telling my story. Um, and I'm, I'm able to be here and tell people, you know, you have it. You have to keep striving for the best and nothing less. My name is Tori Willis Miller, and I have a couple of different roles here at the university. I report straight to the president, and I work out of the Office of Sponsored Programs, and we are developing the Office of Transformation. So, so you are the transformational officer, yes. working directly with UNCF Institute for Capacity Building. Yes. Tell us, we know that it's early because Shaw is part of cohort two, um, but as you look at the opportunities as, they, as they've been presented to you, like what can transformational mean for Shaw University? This is epic, um, especially the timing and everything that it offers. So this is a great opportunity for institutions to get together, like-minded, identify gaps, identify resource sharing, information sharing, and then look to see where can we go from here. So it's a three-year grant, and we're looking to increase enrollment is our first sprint um, by hundreds of students. So you've already started looking at your first sprint and um, therefore set up your office with your role. Can you talk to us about the role that the transformational office will have with the entire institution? It is a strategic project management role, and what it does is identify gaps in our strengths, um, opportunities for growth, um, and it aligns with our strategic plan. So right now, enrollment, retention is what we're focused on. This project allows us to bring cross-campus functions together all in one room, identify who has what information, and then use it to be strategic in the initiatives that we select um, that'll move us forward. Yeah. Speaking of moving forward, we heard President Dillard and even some of the students sort of talk about student success. How do you define student success? I define student success as educating them to change not just their lives, but the generations that follow them and some before them, but also having it end with a career, a career that changes their, uh, their place in life. We come to school for one reason, and that is to equip ourselves with the skills and resources to network and grow our net worth. So that's what we try to provide here at Shaw with our students, with our programs, and uh, externally funded project like partnering with UNCF and our other HBCUs just allows us all to have that same mission going forward. To network and to grow our net worth. I like that because when we look at our partners that enable the work that you all are experiencing, um, there's a constant message around a networked approach partnering and learning from our HBCU. So, so far, uh, as you've taken on the transformational officer role, talk to us about some of your partnerships with other HBCUs in this work. Um, we are in cohort two, so I love the model. What they do is they bring all the TO leads together. Um, we meet regularly, but we also have a project management software system that we're allowed to train with each other on it, ask each other, how are you entering information? What are your benchmarks? What are some of your key milestones? Um, and then we meet regularly off the clock, so to say. Um, most of us do various jobs at our university, so it allows us to bring that knowledge as well to the table and just talk institutional research, institutional data, institutional advancement. Um, what are some of our students' success programs doing? What are some of the positions you fund? It is just really an interesting way. Um, now, we know our presidents all work together, but for the worker bees to get together and just talk shop all day. We love it. Um, and like I said, with the different institutional roles that we all have, 
it just brings a wealth of knowledge to the table. Enrollment is key right now for not just Shaw, but for all of our HBCUs. The pool of students graduating has dwindled. So now, even more than before, we're competing with our majority institutions for the same students. Um, and I think this project is just right on time to help us be more competitive, to help us transform, and to help us think outside the box. You know, not only are we partnering with each other, but we're partnering with some key corporations that, you know, just help us broaden our view on what success looks like for our students, um, not just in our culture, but internationally. So I think this, is, this project is just right on time with, like I said, where Shaw is going, but also where we are as HBCUs and our growth and our success and our transformation. Let me shift gears a little bit and ask you to, to think about just Shaw University. I mean, a very historic institution. Talk to us about uh, what makes Shaw University the unique institution that it is from your vantage point. There's a couple of things that make Shaw unique. For one, our location. We're right downtown Raleigh. Literally, I look out my office window, I can see Fortune 500 companies, but so can our students. They can walk to them. It allows us to have private partnerships to support research, to support knowledge learning and career. We talked about them being able to get a job. That's what you come to school for, being able to start a career. We have those business people right in our backyard. So that's one of the unique, one of the most unique um, uh, parts of Shaw, but also our family. We all love on our students, whether that's your role or not. I don't have a role working directly with students, yet I'm always talking to students. It is what made HBCUs different, is that, you know, we're all family. We're all family, even though we might not be blood related, but we also just try to support our students, no matter where you come from. We know if you love on them first, then you can encourage them, you can deposit into them. You can't make withdrawals without making deposits. A special thank you to Shaw University President Dr. Paulette Dillard, Shaw University Student Government Association President Zaid Steele, and Shaw University's Transformation Officer Dr. Tori Willis for welcoming us to the historic campus of Shaw University and giving us insight into the transformational work that North Carolina's first HBCU is doing. And thank you for listening to this episode of HBCU Voices Executive Leaders Unfiltered. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest events, including Unite 2023, taking place July 17th through the 20th in Atlanta, Georgia. Follow at UNCF ICB to be a part of the action, including a live recording of HBCU Voices. HBCU Voices is brought to you by the UNCF Institute for Capacity Building. I am your host, Dr. Zilla Fluker, Director of Executive Leadership. See you next time.